This video is the product of the Functional Cranial Release Research Institute. For difficult neurologic conditions that no one seems to have answers for, visit functionalcranialrelease.com. So, I've traveled here from Arizona to um, come see you as soon as I could, and was really excited about working on my um, neurologic condition with you, which is um, palatal brachial myoclonus. Um, had it 20, almost 21 years, and um, have been, you know, using natural means to handle my symptoms or live with my symptoms. But really, I was hoping for some strong, um, definitive, um, positive progress in my symptoms, which we have definitely achieved. Mm -hmm. So, and the results that you were producing, showing it really clearly with your patients across multiple imbalances um, very effectively and so when I was 17 I started noticing popping noises in my ears um, and that was shortly after the third head injury that I mentioned and also two vaccinations a tetanus shot and a flu shot within the same week brachial myoclonus flexing of these muscles when I don't engage them to speak mm -hmm. and I don't really notice that and people don't notice it. No mm -hmm. one's ever said, hey, your throat's moving. Mm -hmm. um, but the, there's the popping in my ears, which is When the throat moves. The, mm -hmm. yeah. um, initially said, well, we think maybe you have MS. Mm -hmm. um, and then that was in my early 20s. And then about six months later, they said, it's not MS. It's this, uh, there's two versions of palatal brachial myoclonus. Mm -hmm. I have the second one, which basically means they don't really know treatment why. that they offered was different. They tried me on different medications for epilepsy, and there were a lot of negative side effects, so I just decided that wasn't going to be around. So either. then they sent me to um, UMDNJ, mm -hmm. uh, University, of Medicine, University of Medicine Dentistry in New Jersey. I was seeing a neurologist in Institute of Disease Research in Manhattan basically mm -hmm. and so yeah I was there for and I tried about two years but the um, the last solution was they suggested uh, Botox mm -hmm. injection into the soft palate of the throat and I said that that wasn't something I would feel comfortable with at all. <laughs> okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a specific endonasal balloon inflation on, uh, on her for her condition and uh, we're going to be um, just inflating a specific area on the left side uh, to release some areas that are locked up and uh, kind of adhesions to a deep connective tissue in her skull in hopes that this is going to allow her um, nervous system to function more appropriately to relieve her from her myoclonic um, activity in the throat. How's that sound? That sounds nice. <laughs> Ready? Okay. <clears throat> Should I take my shoes off? No. You're going to lift your arms straight out in front of you. Okay. Yeah, okay. that's fine. You're going to turn your head to the right. Take a deep breath in. And hold it. Contractions are slower. It's like there, yeah. I wish I had timed it because before it was like, now it's like, it's a lot slower, yeah. Mm. Can we do that again? <laughs> <laughs>
processing right now. It feels a lot like there's not as much pressure, but before like someone was squeezing my head all the time. squeezing my head anymore. Um, but even the cranial sacral didn't do anything like that. It was just more managing the discomfort of the symptoms. Yeah, it's a lot quieter. You know, the, the, the perceived pressure that they call it with palatal brachiomyoclonus, um, from when I came here to after four treatments, it's probably at maybe 15% of what it was. It's it's significantly less. Like what wow. you did, it was very different. Like nothing was ever done with me where it was like right to left brain, and or how engaging various parts of the mind actually affected this the symptom very definitively. Did it affect positively, negatively, and, and assessing that. Um, no, nobody ever did that with me, and I was under the care of, in my condition, one of the top people in the country. So it's a, just a different way of thinking, I think, about the body. Um, um, and you also take into consideration more individual factors, which I, I believe is very important. I, I don't know how to put it really into words, but you, you do a, you pair science with art, which is very different. I think in the past I've been with people that are more just coming from very scientific. I want you to just pay attention to the feeling of your throat and we're going to do some different things uh, okay. like we did before okay. and just see if it changes the, um, the, the throat myoclonus. Okay. Okay. Does that change it? It slows it down. That speeds it up. This side, fast as you can. And what happens there? It stops. It stops. Okay. And so on this side. It doesn't stop it. It's maybe slows it down a little bit, but right. Not much. It's kind of helping some of the the midline structures, you know, because the. The, the, the vagus nerve and the hypoglossal nerve, which are involved here, are midline. And so by improving your brain function, you're actually kind of overshadowing some of the, the, uh, the lesion, so to speak. I'll use that word, you know, because that's kind of what it is. We're going to do something called optokinetics. Basically looks like lines moving past. And so what I want you to do is I want you to look at me, okay? Just look at me. And what does that do? It stops it. Okay. So we know we can, this is what the lines look like, by the way. So we know we can use the mesencephalon. Mesencephalon really works well. What about here? Stops it. Okay. Very, very cool. Okay. Look at the, uh, and then what does that do? It speeds it up a little bit. Okay. Same. All on my finger. You tell me why you're doing that. Does that change it? It stops. Okay, what about this way? It doesn't do anything, or maybe speeds it up a little bit, but it still. So when you go this way, it stops, stops it. it. Okay. So when you talk, mm -hmm. it goes away. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you a question, and then instead of telling me uh, and, and actually talking, you're going to think you're talking. Okay. So um, I'll ask you, like, do you have any? Um, uh, plans to go to Hawaii. It stops it. It stops it. Okay. But I feel like my head's more open and like, like I can think clear. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> like it's bigger. <laughs> Up here. Mm -hmm. So, that's, I mean, for me, ultimately, like, I wanted to do this so I could be more productive in my work. So I could serve others more, right? 
mm -hmm. um, because like it's really hard. It's been always really hard for me. Like mm -hmm. I love reading. I for years I used to read like a, as a kid all the time, and I let it go because it was really hard for me to read. Like just like I couldn't focus because it's inward pressure. So I don't even know how I got through college because <laughs> it started at seventeen. So, but um, it, I think it's just over the years that's been hard for me. So I think I'll be more productive at work. Have you tried reading? I did, and I was enjoying it last night, actually. I stopped at Barnes & Noble. <laughs> I was so excited to, like, get a book. <laughs> to get spiritual, but God or the universe or whatever you believe in, I believe that that's how I found you. Because um, my husband and I um, have been really interested in this kind of work, and it's significantly changed our lives um, immensely. So. Yeah, well, I'm excited, and I'm excited for what the future holds. Yeah. Awesome. So if there was someone else out there that had palatal brachial syndrome, myoclonus, mm -hmm. what would you tell them? Oh my gosh, just that there's so much hope in this in this work. There's there's so much positive. Um, you don't have to live feeling like that. You don't have to live on medications. Um, there's a lot you can do. Hi, this is Dr. John. Thanks for joining me. If you or a loved one suffers from difficult neurologic conditions that no one seems to have answers for, send them to functionalcranialrelease.com. You can contact me by phone or email me at askdrjl at gmail.com. And remember, if healing is possible, consider it to be within your reach. Bye for now. Functionalcranialrelease.com.